Well, let me just ask you one thing. We've kind of asked, you know, what what do Jews wish every Christian knew? Um, what? Let me ask you. Let me put it the other way. Um, what would? Let's see. Actually, I forgot my own question. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's pretty bad. But um, you know, again, I, I, I really think that. Well, I was going to kind of jump in on something about Torah, but I I, I lost my train of thought, unfortunately, because uh, I'm kind of managing the controls here as well. But um, I don't. But Bob, what's, let, what's been let, your experience? I mean, yeah, yeah. What is you know? Yeah, what is it? Okay, I kind of thought of my question. What is it that Christians do that turn Jews off about Jesus, or what is the presentation of Jesus? We can come back to that in a second, because Bob, I want to get your your thought, but sure. we'll come back to that in a second. So go ahead, Bob. Well, okay, I was just going to make the the brief comment that you know, having been a student on root source myself, uh, I, uh, I I certainly find the you know these concepts as enriching you know my understanding uh and my belief it certainly is not <laughs> it's it's only improved my love uh for yeshua uh in the process of understanding the context uh in which he was living uh simple as that i, I think one of the one of the big things that i've seen just in interacting with uh, Orthodox Jews over the last uh, two, three years as part of this process when Gedon and I came together to, to decided to come together and try to build this resource thing um, was just, you know, like you said, we have, we have taken faith away from uh, the Jewish people as Christians. We have stereotyped Jews as observant about trying to earn their their way to the father through through works um, and um, and my experience in getting to know people uh, is is to see it's, it's just amazing how much faith there is how much focus there is in trying to understand and and fit and and uh, I mean even the fact that uh, there's no temple for sacrifices so you know, it's the the sacrifice of praise is the uh, you know is the operative way in which uh, Jews come before and confess sins every day and uh, 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 and and ask God to forgive them uh, uh, personally and corporately. Just just many many things. It's just a, a beautiful thing and it just a, a lot lot more overlap and, and understanding than I've ever seen. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that because it's really important to understand that. Um, I mean, there's some very godly people in Judaism and Christianity in general. Again, I'm kind of painting with with big brush strokes here, but uh, generally doesn't think that that they are. That in fact, I was so much into that idea that I uh, years ago I was I was having these kind of regular debates with this anti missionary person, and um, I, I said, you know, you you Jews are just you know doing the commandments to try to earn your way or earn favor with God. And uh, the person quickly quipped, no, we're not. You know, I'm like, yes, you are. And, you know, no, we're not. I said, yes, you are. You're just doing that to try to earn your way, you know, earn your salvation. And uh, the person said, no, we do it because God said to. And it, at that moment, I was just like, I'm like, whoa. You know, I had no response for that because I had been taught that, you know, we receive it by faith. It's all by grace. But the Jews are trying to, you know, they're, they're doing the commandments of trying to earn their salvation, you know. And when, you know, when that response came, I was just, I had no response to it. I, I had no comeback because I thought, well, you know, I, I can't really argue against that. If you're doing it because God said to I can't tell you to not do it because if God told you to do it, then you know you should do it, right? So um, I think that's really under, important for us to, to kind of just think about that and to re, redo our thinking about that. But uh, Guidon, I wanted to ask you uh, really one more question, and that is, what is maybe you know just kind of what's the biggest that you can think of doctrine or you know thing that we Christians are teaching that is the most offensive? To Jews, uh, I'm not offended by anything people do when I'm not watching. <laughs> well, I, well again, I remind you, I have teenage children. Sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But uh, but um, <laughs> I, I think what's what I think what's important is that you have to just say, "You're you, I'm me." 
I am going to try to have a normal relationship with you, not try to stick you into, into some box that I'm expecting you to be. Think about it. Put all the religion aside. You go to the supermarket, you get on a bus, you go to a university, you're working with, a, you have a new colleague at work. If you would, would, would expect something of these people uh, and, and dehumanize them, then, then that's, a, that's the kind of relationship that you're going to have with them. So all we're asking is just don't, ex don't, don't expect anything from us. If you, if you want to try to do something nice, and, and we're nice people, I, I highly recommend that you try to establish friendly relationships with nice people. Don't bother with the people who aren't nice. <laughs> Stick away from them. But if you're going to, have a, if you're going to try to be, be, be nice to people, then just be nice and little by little, see what the, what, where, what the boundaries are. That, that's it. So if you're saying what doctrine, what theology, what, we got, I think we're already over time. It's not, we're not going to go over 2000 years of, of, of <laughs> dueling theologies over here. We're going to say, listen, I heard about something. Could you answer my question? Well, I'm going to be able to see from your body language if you're, sincere in that question or if you're just asking me about isaiah 53 because you want to show me how yeah you see that's what i mean come on <laughs> we, if you really want to know what isaiah what i how i understand it then be open to, to to hearing it and but preferably don't even ask about it let's find stuff that we don't have to uh that that isn't the the, the flash points let's start with the stuff that we can both enjoy together that's what i think it the Jews that God is raising up in this work, from my perspective, Jews like Gedon, who uh, represents a foundation stone, in a sense, for Sefer, uh, I think many Jews and the way that they could interact with, with, uh, with Christians, non-Jews. Um, the, the Jews that are being raised up by God are Jews that have the ability to push aside the offense that could be easily taken uh, from theological differences. Um, and similarly, I think that the Christians or you know, Yeshua followers, whatever, that God is raising up in to, to connect are also Christians that are willing to push aside the offense for not uh, accepting, you know, that that the that one that that we would die for our, you know, uh, that, that, that one, Yeshua, that, that we would follow to the ends of the earth. Um, and, uh, you know, but Jews have their, their struggles as well. You know, the, the things that they have to push aside to do this. So I think that's, that's the first thing. And I think that's what you're seeing with Gadon and why you, you didn't get a crystal clear, specific theological answer. Well, I just want to say thank you to you both. Um, you know, the, the Jewish people have impacted me significantly uh, when I went, decided to go to Israel to study at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Uh, I kind of went there on faith, uh, not really sure what to expect. I thought maybe I would just take out student loans to do that. And lo and behold, I received scholarships uh, all three years that I was there. And I thought, who are these people that are giving me these scholarships, you know? And... I don't know to this day, just they were kind of in the, the general fund, you know, from the Hebrew University, friends of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. And I thought, well, isn't this incredible that, you know, some Jew that doesn't know me is giving money and I, a Christian that I don't believe in the Talmud or whatever, right? Um, especially about back then, uh, you know, I, they were giving me money, right, to study. And they were underwriting my studies at the Hebrew University. And I thought that was pretty amazing. And so, you know, that that is stuck with me, that the generosity, the uh, just the, the kindness. Right. And, and it was an unspoken, unsung kind of generosity. Right. I've, I have not had a chance to thank those people personally. But, you know, whoever you are, wherever you are, I just want to thank you for 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 sowing into my life because it really made a huge difference. And. You know, I, I think what you said, Gidon, is really important. Let's not start with the flashpoints, but let's start with what do we agree on? Let's have a discussion. And I, I think that really is is something that is growing. Uh, I have a, a friend in Israel, David Nekrutman, who is the director for the Center for uh, Christian Jewish 
no, the Christian Jewish Center for Understanding and Cooperation. It's quite the title. And, um, you know, that's another organization, I guess, in a way similar to Root Source, that, um, you know, this is specifically designed to help, you know, have Christians come to the land. Let's talk. Let's, you know, get into some of those theologies. Let's, let's talk about those things, right? But let's also show you what we think uh, and let's try to understand one another. And I'm just excited about that because it really makes a difference and a lot of times as we've all learned in communication that a lot of times we have miscommunication because we're talking past each other we're not talking to each other we're not listening right i mean how many marriages have been dissolved because people were not listening right <laughs> uh how many uh business deals have gone bad because people were not listening to each other uh, how many wars have been started because people were not listening to each other everyone just, yeah exactly exactly you know uh, you know God, I mean, I'm as guilty as anybody, right? So this is what we're trying to do is to kind of bridge this gap. And so I'm very grateful. And and as I said at the very beginning, you know, I'm very, very grateful uh, to the Jewish people as a whole over the last several thousand years for maintaining the oracles of God, as Paul puts it, you know, that uh, we're very grateful, right? Because without without the Jewish people, where would the Hebrew be? Where would uh, just the the understanding that has been passed on uh, without that, we would be very bankrupt without that stuff. So we're grateful. Thank you guys. Uh, keep up the good work, Gidon. Thank you for being so courageous to uh, you know kind of hold hands here with us Christians and uh, you know show us show us around. To you know, you're getting some some grief from some of some of your uh, Jewish neighbors, and what are you what are you doing, right? But we appreciate it, and I I think what you're doing, the sowing that you're going to do is going to reap a harvest, all right? It, yeah. it may take a little longer than we all expect, right? But it is going to reap a harvest, right? So what we sow is what we reap. That's a, a principle in the scripture, and when you, when you sow to righteousness, when you sow generosity, when you sow kindness, you will reap those things later. And so we appreciate it. And I want to encourage everyone who is watching to do the same. All right. Uh, it doesn't mean we have to agree on every single theological point. That's, you know, of course not. Right. I mean, maybe someday. Right. Uh, but it may not be the Jews who are the ones changing. Maybe we Christians are the ones who need to change some of our perspectives. Maybe we haven't quite understood what was being said. And, you know, and if, and if the Jews need to change, let God let God worry about that, okay? But let's focus on what we can do with ourselves because we can't change anybody else. I've discovered that after a number of years, right? I can't change anybody except me. I can only change me. And so I need to focus on me and in a sense of my community. I can work on my community, but I can't change your community. And so that is what we can do to make a difference in the world is start to focus on how can I be a better person and I'll let God worry about you becoming a better person. So thank you guys. Thank you everyone for watching. Stay in the word. Okay. Read the whole thing, right? Start with Genesis, you know, go through the Torah, brilliant stuff in there. Meditate there on Leviticus 25 about setting people free. That is what God is into. It's about liberty. It's freedom. It's joy, and thank God for the Jubilee. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys. Stay in the word, everyone.